Hello there, Matt here at 5280 Armory, my home away from home. Last week I was shooting the Gerson MC9 9mm pistol. This week I'm still shooting Gerson, but I'm going to step up to the match grade MC9. So let's take a closer look at what this pistol has to offer. The first thing that I noticed was the barrel. It's a little bit longer, coming in at about 4.6 inches. That's about a half inch longer than the MC9 we shot last week. The barrel is flush cut at the muzzle, and it's got a nice deep recessed crown. The slide has plenty of flutes cut into it to compensate for that added weight, and with that extra length barrel, we also got a longer sight radius coming in at about six and a half inches. The match pistol has the far dot, red dot sight system already installed straight from the factory, and it also has a clever little feature that's machined into the back of it. All red dot sights should be this way. That's the rear sight that instantly, seamlessly, co-witnesses the gun straight out of the box. The slide houses the same loaded chamber indicator, external extractor, and cocking indicator as the MC9, but the match pistol did get at the rear of the frame an ambidextrous safety. The frame itself is the same size as the MC9 that we shot last week. It's got the identical ambidextrous slide release and accessory rail. They did, however, oversize the takedown lever and mag release, and they added a nice big beveled magwell. The takedown lever swings 90 degrees clockwise. You do have to pull the trigger to separate the slide from the frame. When it's apart, everything's pretty straightforward and self-contained, including the one-piece guide rod and recoil spring. That's going to make cleaning and reassembly a breeze, as it should be. The trigger is noticeably different, but we're going to talk about that when we hit the range. We'll also cover reliability and accuracy. So let's grab some ammo and let's get going. You can tell the trigger is different just by looking at it. The original MC9 has a trigger bar safety. This one's red and doesn't have the trigger bar safety. That's why they incorporated the uh, manual safety at the rear of the frame. The Lyman gauge is telling me about six pounds. Typically that reads a little bit heavy, but uh, let's uh, get a feel for it rather than listen to the gauge. The uh, trigger travels a little bit more than usual at a quarter of an inch on the reset. So let's see where we're landing on target. Looks like we've got a fair group. Let's go get a closer look. That bench rest group wasn't bad. I know that the gun is capable of doing better. With a little bit more practice, I think I can tighten that group. Let's see how it does offhand. All right, let's go down and take a peek. That last shot group was shot at about 40 feet. That's farther than most competition distances. Something like IDPA typically isn't that far. So I'm pretty confident that once I zero this red dot, I'll be able to keep it within the parameters that I need to. Uh, let's try some holster work. Keep in mind, this red dot is gonna cause trouble finding holsters. All right, I think I kept them all on target. All right, I've got a pretty good feel for the trigger and I know where it's landing on target. How about we go over to the other side of the range, run this through some shooting drills and let's see how it does. We're going to have the MC9 match and the regular Gerson MC9 that I was shooting last week for sale and for rent down here at the shop. So why don't you come on down and take a look. 5280 Armory, Colorado's Gun Shop. We'll see you soon.
Hey, and don't forget, if you like watching videos about firearms and supporting your Second Amendment, or you're from another country in which you had a Second Amendment, do us a big favor, hit that subscribe button so we can keep this channel going. And thanks for watching.